Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Janet. And we are Distinctive. Distinctive. We're dual income, no kids, and we love to talk about uh, Walt Disney World. And talking is all we can do right now. Uh, apparently that's all anyone of, any of us can do right now, unfortunately. Uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit different from the usual since Disney World is closed, and that is the, the news topic of today. We're going to be focused on more of a debate style video where we debate uh, predictions about the reopening of Walt Disney World and all of its phases. So let's get into where we stand today and from that we'll kick off into where we think it'll be tomorrow. So um, as, uh, as most of you know, uh, Disney World officially closed on March 16th of this year um, and you know, as a result, uh, we will be waiting for official notice of uh, Disney to announce when we're going to reopen, which has yet to, to occur. So we have to speculate, and that's what this video is really all about. Wild speculation. You know all those people who are being like super careful and going, well, we don't exactly know yet. Disney hasn't released it. Yeah, we don't care about that. We're going to just make some wild guesses because it's fun. Yes. It's... So take everything we say with a huge shaker of salt because we have no more information than anybody else could find on the internet. Where's the salt? Where's the <laughs> salt? Oh, okay. Oh. Um, so the first thing we have to key off of is existing information to help inform our forecast. So what we looked at is a couple of things. One is the reopening that have been announced and the reopenings that have already, ha already have taken place. And those are going to help inform what we believe is going to happen in the future. So the first thing that we know for certain is uh, already been announced the opening in Disney World would be Disney Springs and that officially will be opened on uh, May 20th. Uh, so that's in just a few short weeks. Um, there are some guidelines that they are going to follow as a result of Florida's restrictions um, and we can get into that. But uh, the second uh, official announcement that we have to key off of is that right now, all of the bookings that have been made for the month of May have been canceled. So those people are getting refunds um, and uh, they have the ability to rebook with additional offers and discounts. They have an offer for a discount on the hotel room for a future booking as well as the free dining offer that's actually truly, truly free, no air quotes on this one, a free uh, Disney dining offer for their potential uh, future book. Yeah, so that's all the people between March 16th and the end of May who Disney canceled their trip, they um, have the opportunity to rebook and get that, that discount. So um, that's basically all we know about Disney World right now. But we know a lot more about Shanghai Disneyland. Because um, Shanghai Disneyland is has also been closed, obviously. It closed earlier than Walt Disney World because of its location in China. Um, and so the interesting thing, I think, about the Shanghai Disneyland closure is so they're reopening today. Um, so we know how much total elapsed time it took for um, Shanghai Disneyland to consider it safe to open up. Um, and they have um, a whole list of what the new rules are going to be. So we can talk about what those new rules are going to be for Shanghai Disneyland when we start guessing about what might be for Disney World. Um, but basically, I, I did the math. Yeah, I'm a geek. Shanghai Disneyland overall was closed for 107 days. They opened their shopping um, 44 days. So they have what's called Disney Town, which is essentially their Disney Springs. And so they had 44 days elapsed between when they closed in January and when they opened Disney Town. And then they had another three months, or sorry, two months, 63 days between when Disney Town opened and when the parks opened. Um, so I, I made a little graph because I'm a nerd. Um, oh, here's the graph. <laughs> Um, so, no, well, that's, that's Disney World. There you go. So, um, Shanghai Disneyland is on the left in there, right? And they're on the bottom in the little graph. So, basically, the total number of days that they were closed before they opened their shopping. They opened their shopping and their dining 
um, off Parks Dining and their hotel resort all at the same time. So I think that's really interesting because Disney World has announced that Disney Springs is going to open up and that was a was that 65 days so we were actually closed longer until they reopened up the shopping but they haven't said anything about the hotels yet so it seems to me like they're relying a lot on local traffic going to disney springs initially to kind of give it that that soft opening and get some idea of of what's going on there and of course we have no idea when the parks are going to reopen um but i'm using shanghai disneyland as kind of a general idea of um the the total length of time now of course the progression of the disease in Shanghai versus the progression of this disease in Florida are not directly comparable. So obviously there's some flex in there. Maybe Florida is going to reopen a little bit earlier, maybe a little bit later, depending on the number of cases and all that and government decisions and everything else that's different between uh, Orlando and Shanghai, which I've never been to Shanghai, but I imagine there's a lot of differences, um, but that gives you some idea of kind of where we are in the grand scheme of things. We're about 60% of the way toward how long it took Shanghai and Disneyland to open up all together. Um, all right, so their new rules are, obviously there's distancing in the queues and on the ride vehicles. So like they're putting every other seat on Pirates of the Caribbean or um, Small World boats. Every other row. Right, every other row, yeah. And then um, they have like different spots for people to stand. Interestingly, they do have a parade I saw on um, their little preview info. Um, they had like a small parade and they had parade watching spots. Um, so it's been debated whether or not there's going to be any parades, but it looks like Shanghai Disneyland is going to have at least a small one going on. They're going to screen for temperatures at the gates um, before you go through security. They're going to have hand sanitizer available at the entrance and exit to every single ride. And the one that I think is the most interesting is everybody who has a park ticket, including pass holders, is going to have to make an advanced reservation for the date they're going to the park. Um, and they're running at 30% capacity, which I believe is what the government mandated to them. All right, so that's what's going on in Shanghai. What's going on in Florida? So, uh, what's going on in Florida is based on the Florida Reopen Task Force that was created by Governor DeSantis. Uh, on that task force was various business owners, uh, of course, Disney being one of them, also uh, Universal, uh, which, uh, which is owned by Comcast. They had representation as well on this board. And so they came to, to some decisions, um, and one of them... It was on essentially phase reopening of the theme parks. So currently, there's a, there's technically four phases to the plan. Phase zero already expired. That was the shelter in place. Phase one is currently on right now, which allows for 50% of capacity of restaurants. That doesn't include theme parks yet. That's because theme parks are not allowed to open in phase one. So 50% of restaurants, right? What? Put the thing up. Oh, sorry. This, this, which one do you want to see? Yeah, one. Oh, sorry. Wife's, uh, the wife's uh, yeah. giving me instructions here. So, hold on. Uh, we want to see <laughs> that. Hey, it's okay. It's, it's, you know, it's live. It's okay. So here are the capacity limits. Uh, phase 1, 50% for restaurants. And then phase 2 allows for 75% of restaurants capacity. In phase one, there is no openings of theme parks, and in phase two, there's 50% capacity of theme parks. Now, there are a couple of specific uh, things in response to these phases that may be different for Disney World than what the uh, guideline recommends, meaning that probably Disney is going to be more stringent than these guidelines you see here. And so the first set is that even though in phase uh, phase two, when Disney can start reopening, uh, that they're allowed to have restaurants be at 75% capacity, it already was suggested by uh, um, Josh DeMauro, who was on the task force, that they were going to do 50% capacity of their restaurants within the theme parks anyways. So it all, that makes sense. As well as the fact that in phase two, bars are only allowed at 50%, even though restaurants can be at 75%. So rather than having to worry about that distinction, they're most likely going to implement 50% capacity across the board for 
all restaurants, bars, and the theme parks itself. All right, so that I think is everything that we know. So based on that information, we're going to play a little game. We have our, our trusty little sheets here, so we can't cheat. No cheating. And we're going to put forward our guesses on um, on what the uh, various scenarios might be for Walt Disney World. Okay, so we're using what we already know about Disney World and some of the stuff we know about Shanghai Disneyland to make these guesses. All right, so um, let's start with an easy one. Um, do you think there will be a fireworks show? I'm not... Okay, now I'm ready. Ready? No fireworks show. <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah. I don't think we're in pretty much agreement on uh, that. I think everyone's in agreement on that. And I think even Chapek said something to that effect when he was speculating a while, a few days, you know, a week or so ago. Um, so, yeah. The, uh, the reason why I say hell no on this one is pr pretty much because Josh Damara already made the recommendation that they would say as a guideline, they would say no fireworks show because... It is impossible to manage social distancing protocols during that kind of a crowded event. So, so okay. it probably will not happen until phase three. So, All right. And also, there's kind of this interesting thing where Asian cultures tend to be kind of self-crowd controlling. Just a little more part of the culture than in the States. You don't have a lot of, you know, that jostling for position and that sort of thing as much as you do in the state. So I think that it's probably easier to have that sort of thing in a place where everyone's accustomed to standing in one place and not bothering other people. All right. um, okay. So a little bit trickier one here, knowing what we know about Shanghai Disneyland. What about parades? Do you think there will be parades? Are we specifically, gonna, we we'll to, say, we'll say, will there be know, the festival of fantasy well, no, parade? No, no, no. Cause we that's need, basically the only we need to put a We need to put a spectrum on it like a, a, a one to five scale on the likelihood of it and then put our answer as to which one we'd go with okay it's fine because it's not really we're, we're, we're pontificating here so so five is guaranteed going to open parades one is absolutely not okay okay so actually one let's do Festo zero. festival fantasy parade yeah go for it um festival fantasy I changed my mind halfway through it. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Okay. All right. You say three. I say three. I say two. I don't think there will be a Festival of Fantasy parade, but I do think they might do the Rainy Day Parade or some version of it. What's that? They've got a parade that on days when it rains, mm -hmm. they have kind of like a truncated parade where not all the characters are out and they mostly ride in cars rather than doing kind of a lot of the fan interaction that they normally would do. Um, and I think that that might be... They might modify that and offer it as a parade. Mm, I don't think it's going to... But I don't think they're going to do a full-on well, festival. I think they parade. will. And the reason is, I put a three because, you know, we just don't know, but Shanghai has a parade in the reopening. And they are able to do social distancing by having uh, predetermined uh, viewing areas, which they already do mark out with masking tape. So what they'll have to do is just uh, it, ensure that guests are further apart from each other within those viewing areas. And at reduced capacity, that shouldn't be a, that big of a problem. I, so that's why I think it. Okay. Um, where do you want to go next? Do you want to talk about PPE? Sure. All right. Um, let's start easy again. Do you think they're going to do... Temperature checks, and if so, at what point in the process? Uh, well, you want to put the same one to five scale? Sure. Uh,
I said it was before security. Same yeah. Thing. Said and it. infrared, right? Forehead scanner. Yeah, yeah infrared. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so why'd you go five? I think that that is kind of one of the most standard and also most easily implemented things. And I mean, I get that it's not a hundred percent indicator of someone's status. And I know that a lot of people have been saying, well, it's hot in Florida, particularly in the summer, so it's probably not going to be accurate. Um, but I think they'll at least start with it. And if it turns out to be, you know, a logistical nightmare, they might get rid of it quickly. But I think they're definitely going to try it to start. Um, I think they want to appear to be doing everything they can possibly do. And that's like the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Um, they'll try for certain because it's easy. And it doesn't really slow down the process of going through the bag check all that much if they have the right number of people for it. And considering it's reduced capacity, it's not going to be that big of a deal on that. But it'll have to be done in a shaded area with fans on you because otherwise there'll be a lot of false positives in South Florida, especially people who wear hats to get away from the sun because it's just measuring the temperature of your forehead skin. And that has nothing to do with your internal body temperature, which your forehead skin will be much hotter in a summer day with a hat on over that 100.4 degrees, pretty obviously. So you'll just have to like, oh, if you go over, you'll have to take your hat off, cool off, and then come back in and you'll be fine. It's like, well, a sick person could just put ice in their forehead and do the same thing. So I, I don't, it doesn't really add any secure, uh, health security. If I don't you think ask there's going to be a lot of people who but, feel sick who are trying to sneak into Disney World, though. I think they're mostly concerned about people who are sick but don't know it. Yeah, I know. I, I just, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't help. But they'll do it because it's a simple thing to do. And they might abandon it, like you said, if they get too many false positives. All right, let's go to social distancing norms. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this one in a distance. What do you think is going to be the minimum distance that Disney recommends keeping from other people? You know, I mean, we all know what that's going to mm -hmm. be. Do we? Yeah, of course it is. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It's obviously six feet. One meter, that's one meter. three feet. I know. Well, that's what the that's what the WHO says. I guess but, that's you know, my point. WHO is it's run worldwide by... Worldwide company. It's run by China, though. But how many people... We don't trust the WHO anymore. Okay, but Disney no, no has chance. a very strong connection with China. They yes. have a bunch of perks in China. And they are an international company. Lots of people from around the world come to Disney World, not just Americans. I get it. But we're... No American business is going to be seen adhering to WHO guidelines over uh, CDC guidelines when we are in... A political strike. But do you think it's actually physically possible to walk down Main Street and stay six feet from everybody? No, of course not. But they're okay. not going to. They're not going to enforce it that through walking through the park, you have to be six feet apart. They're going to enforce it if there's a parade. They're going to force where you stand. If you know when you sit in a restaurant, they're going to force that you're certain feet from. They're going to do that, but they're not going to do that while you're just. The restaurants, walking. I agree. Though it'll be six feet, but I think that the uh, I think that the standing around is going to be a meter. They're not going to enforce it. They could say whatever they want, but they're not going to enforce that anyway. So. Plus, you know, if I'm keeping a meter and you're keeping it, you get six. Oh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, now, one of now on the big ones. Now on the big ones, sure. Face masks. One to five. One, they won't care at all. Five, everyone must wear a face mask. Required. Five would be required, right? Right. One does one mean encourage? What where is encouraged to stand on that scale? Encouraged but not required. Somewhere in the middle, I guess. Sure. Then fine. I'm gonna go with that. All right. All right. Uh, I put a three. You put a four. I think cast members will absolutely be required oh, to wear face masks. That's actually guests yeah. will be in, strongly encouraged to wear face masks. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Josh Demar already recommended that. I, I think that there's no may, no doubt that the cast members the cast will. members will be wearing it. Uh, they don't have to. 
Um, it's not a requirement. They buy a uniform, law, but, so they like just tell them it's part of the uniform. I said a three because honestly, I think they'll just strongly encourage it because there's too many nightmare issues with wearing something that affects your breathing in a hot and humid climate like Florida. Plus, it's, little kids, right? Little like kids you're not going to get balls. you're never going to get a little kid to wear a face mask all day long. You no. might be able to, you know, be get them accustomed to it or make them, you know, one that's a fun design or something that they'll want to wear for a little while, but they're not going to wear it for a full day. Yeah. There's no, no way. There's no way. No way at all. I won't I won't go if they require face masks. That's what a lot of people are saying. All right. All right. Um let's go to um who is the park going to open up to first? All right, what are our categories there though? So that everybody understands what we're choosing from. Well, I mean, Florida basically, residents. yeah, you got Florida residents, you got pass holders, Florida pass you've got holders. resort guests only, and I guess you've got just kind of the general public, whoever wants to come. Uh, yeah, single day tickets, multi day yeah. tickets. So we, what, I should I should point out we didn't we talk go? about this. Disney, of course, does have a capacity closure plan. You can find it very easily if you Google for it. Um, I think it's even on their website someplace. Um, but basically, they've got in place already. That as the parks fill on very busy days like Christmas or New Year's, um, how they close down the parks, what categories of tickets and guests get kicked out, right? So cast members can't come in on a free ticket. That's the first one to go. Then nobody who wants a casual ticket, like they just want to go to the window and buy a ticket. No, they can't even come in the parking lot. Then it becomes nobody with a single day ticket. Then it starts getting more restrictive later on where it's... Um, only resort guests and pass holders, then it becomes only resort guests um, until you get all the way down to phase four, which is nobody can come in um, or nobody new can come. In. So my guess is since they already have this whole thing in place, they're going to modify it and work it backwards for reopening mm -hmm. because it just yeah. makes sense to use a policy so you already what? have. So the question is, what categories do we think? Resort guests? Pass holders, and it's been bandied about that maybe Florida residents, because those are the people who don't have to travel in order to get to Walt Disney World. So it could right. be that they would go for Florida tickets. So who do you think is going to get to access first? All right. All right. Uh, I say pass holders within driving distance. But there's no way that they can uh, there is a way control they can encourage who's that. in driving distance. Yeah, there's a way they can encourage it. They're not going to run the Magical Express. But, That's but one people way rent cars them. and stuff. They I can mean... rent them. They don't care. They just want to discourage people from flying in. That's all they care about so that they look good. From a PR standpoint, that we're not we're not saying hey everybody fly to Disney. World. I don't think that I don't think that's true. I think that based on the capacity numbers, what they're going to want to do is bring in as many people as they reasonably uh, can who um, uh, who they have you know some kind of reasonable control over, right? So like if you're coming in and you're staying at a Disney resort, they know that. For the most part, the things that you're experiencing are kind of within that Disney bubble, and the Disney bubble is going to be, you know, hyper-regulated and sanitized, and therefore they're going to have a reduced likelihood of a lot of um, potential disease vectors coming in. Yes, but that means you allow for guests to fly in. Magical Express still working because they booked a resort. But you have to consider that if they're going to reduce the capacity of the parks, they they need to be bringing in as much money as they can on other places. And one of the best things to do that with is hotels. A person who lives in Orlando coming in for a day and buying, you know, a couple of beers and lunch is not making their ends meet with regards to recouping two months yeah, worth of yeah. lost no, revenue. I, I get it. I get it. But there is there's a twofold thing going on here. One is if they filled every hotel room, within Disney World. There's about 30,000 hotel rooms in Disney World. An average, uh, the max capacity supposedly of Magic Kingdom, just Magic Kingdom is 50,000 guests. 
I read now, that it's about a hundred thousand for all the core parks for for Disney World generally. All right, so we'll we'll just I don't think I think it's higher than that. Epcot's much larger. Animal uh, Kingdom. That's larger. a number that I looked I for it on the internet because I was curious, I and I got a like hundred thousand in a couple of different more than like one hundred twenty-five thousand. But let's just say on average, on average, you're gonna have what? What do you want? Oh, you want a pad thing? On average, that uh, you have two and a half guests per room. I think that's a fair number, right? So that that maybe yeah yeah yeah. So that puts you at uh, seventy-five thousand, eighty thousand, right? Not not even at max capacity yet, right? Well, maybe they're not going to open up all of the resorts within all categories. Maybe so that, they'll open up you know just the monorail resorts and not. Okay. Animal Kingdom Lodge and That's one thing. Wilderness Lodge. The and... other thing is, the other thing is, they might be concerned in trying to balance out an, a rush of people, like filling the resort instantly and just hitting that max capacity overnight. Like, yeah, and they, that's what happened with Shanghai Disney. Even with the reservation system, they they sold out overnight of it. Yep. And yes, it was thirty percent of a much smaller resort. However. It still shows you the demands there for people who are at least local within, you know, they have a lot more people that are within driving distance or within public transit of their park than Walt Disney World does in terms of their makeup. But uh, it shows that there's still demand for people to go in theme parks even after this the whole pandemic. No, I thing. agree that the demand is there, and that's why I'm saying they would restrict it to people who are staying in their hotels because they can control how many people are staying in their hotels. So they can guarantee if they restrict it to only resort guests that they're not going to have more than X number of people trying to access the park on any given day. No, they're not. They're not going to. They're not going to ban annual pass holders because that means they have. That's more days they have to refund, and they can't afford the cash the flow. Mm -hmm. They need cash flow. They're I borrowing think, think money right a, now. I think to that's operate. a second wave. I think they're going to do resort guests and then pass holders. I mean. Come on, most of the You're resort guests are going to be pass holders probably because people who aren't pass holders don't want to pay a full price for a ticket and only get 30%, you know, if there's no shows, yes, for example. No, if there's no indoor I'm... shows, which is probably likely initially, All right. then they're not going to want to go. So fine, let's put on the next one right here. Let's put the next one. Well, what, type of, what type of guest is going to go willingly during this period where there's restrictions in place? Who's the type of guest that's going to come? Who do you think? It's a silly question. You only no, have the same not. answer. No, it's not. Now, see, if we don't have the same answer... Yeah, annual pass holders are locals. Oh, are locals. Well, obviously, I, I, put, I wouldn't put locals in there, though. I don't... I don't yeah, what are you talking about? If I if we lived I'll locally, you, I would locals. be in. I would I already it. have so a date with Disney not, Springs on May twentieth. I would definitely be at Disney Springs on so May twentieth if I was a local. Non pass holder locals, right? That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. What well, both? They're I mean, not, there's also I a get lot it. of locals. I get it. But, but I mean, they're not gonna. Get, they're not even gonna open it up to non pass holders, and the reason is is because they're more interested in keeping the cash flow of the money they already have. Then getting but, new but money I misunderstood at this your point. question because I thought you said who was gonna go, not who was Disney gonna let go. Oh, okay, fine, fair enough. I locals agree would with go. That. Locals would I go. I don't think Disney's gonna let them. Locals would go. Yeah, okay. I think I think you're gonna see resort guests first, and then you're gonna see pass holders before anybody else. All right, we're in agreement on that. Then. All, right. All right. Um. Okay, so we've reached the biggie then. The biggie. What's the biggie? Opening dates. Opening you dates. You gotta put your, put it down on erasable paper. Oh wait, wait! Before we make an opening date, we have to announce the fact that they apparently there are some there's some people who supposedly have a reservation, whether or not this is true or not. This is anecdotal. Who have reservations that are in June that have already received cancellation notices, saying they're canceling the reservation. However. Uh, we have a booking on the second week of June, have yet to receive it. It doesn't mean that this isn't happening and we're not going to receive we it. We could be getting that email right but now. <laughs> there is a possibility that part of their uh, part of their reservation extends into some portion of May, whether it's May 30th or whatever. And maybe that's the reasoning that would make sense as to why it they were It seems there. pretty certain that anybody who has a reservation that is pre-June 1 that's for is certain. getting canceled. That's for certain in my mind. Um, yeah. we, well, obviously we don't know that for sure, but I've heard that 
in a lot of different places. So I think that anybody who has a reservation before June 1 is getting canceled. We don't know of any that are exclusively June or later that have been canceled as of yet. They might be out there. If, you, if you're that person, tell us, let us know. And that would be very interesting to know. Um, put it in the comments. But, uh, all right, we got to do two things though here. Because Shanghai Disneyland opened their hotel at the same time they opened Disney Town. But Disney World, as we just said, has canceled everybody up through June 1 at least. So they are not opening the hotels the same time as Disney Springs. There's at least a two week gap there for a week and a half. So when do you think they're going to open the hotels? And then we'll do when do you think they're going to open the parks? So put a date down. What day are they going to open at least one Disney World Resort hotel? All right. I got to get my days of the week here. I mean... Okay. Right? This is for resort. Resorts. First day of resorts. July 1st. I put June 8th. No. I think it's going to be tough for what? them to rely only on local foot traffic for Disney Springs for longer than a couple of weeks. I think they want to test it out for a short period of time with locals and people who are willing to come just for Disney Springs. And yes. then I think they'll start slowly opening up with just Disney Springs and the hotels before they ever get to the parks. And I think that about what that, what is that? 10, 18 days. So, you know, almost three weeks. That's, I think that's about right. So my belief is, although we, we do have full disclosure of booking on June 8th, so we would like for June 8th <laughs> to be that day. But uh, the reason why I don't believe the resorts will be open is because I believe the, the that's park, why we picked that booking by the way. The parks will be open. And I think they want to test the parks, all the new procedures with real, I mean, obviously going to do some testing before that with their own, you know, with their own cast members, but they want to do it in much smaller capacity than 50%. So you think they're going to open the parks before the resorts? I think they're going to open up the parks June 1st. I think they're going to open up you the July resort oh. July 1st. You so just then gave they have them. <laughs> doesn't matter. Just so that they have. Uh, a, a way to test all the social distancing and how it works. So, all right. Well, you already put yours, but go ahead and write it down for posterity yeah, no, here. I'm not going to write it down. What day do you think they are going to open the Disney World Resort or Disney World Parks? Or at least one of them. At least one of them. There has been also bandied about this idea that they may have, you know, parks open only a couple of days out of the week and cycle them or something like that in order to, uh, you know, allow for increased sanitation or whatever. I don't, oh, you I don't know. All right. I'll... But, all right, put down your date. What day are they going to open the parks in Disney, Walt Disney World? We're almost exactly <laughs> opposite on this. So I got this number because Shanghai Disneyland was closed 107 days, and believe it or not, July 1st is 107 days from March 16th. I don't and think and counting it's, that. And right? it's early enough that they would then be open for the 4th of July. I do not think there's any way that they're going to not be at least partially open for the 4th of July. That's one of the busiest no. days of the year. Okay, okay, okay. So also, this it would is be why... kind of like tragic with regards to Americana and patriotism. This is why you're it's exactly why you're dead wrong about July first. All right, you're dead wrong. I agree with you that they will not miss a Fourth of July because of patriotism, and it would be very depressing. And we need to celebrate something in this country. And there will be fireworks in D.C. There might not be in New York, probably, but there will be in D.C. So Disney desperately is not going to do a 4th of July celebration without fireworks. It's just not going to happen. They want to do the whole shebang, and they will do the whole shebang. And the way they're going to accomplish the whole shebang is by opening up on June 1st and testing everything out. No fireworks until we get to 4th of July. Or instituting a whole bunch of pay-to-play, private party sort of things where they can control exactly how many people are in the area for fireworks. 
If like this, a July no, 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 4th no, event. It's a PR nightmare. It's a PR nightmare to sell to sell uh, a Disney after hour they tickets. They already do that for Christmas. For firework shows that aren't happening at, at all during any day of the week just because of the pandemic. No, 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 no. They already no, do that for Christmas. No. The only way to see the Christmas parade is to go the I week of Christmas it. or buy but a ticket to the It's not uh, the same as, as something they do every night, which is fireworks. It's not this. I know there's some similarities where they're like, oh, you do, you go to Magic Kingdom during Mickey's Not So Scary. You don't get to see fireworks unless you pay for the ticket. And I get that. However, no days of the week there'll be fireworks while they're under this first phase of restrictions. There won't be any, I believe. We were there the first week of December last year, and there was literally only one night that we were capable of seeing the Magic it. Kingdom fireworks over it. our seven-day trip. This so. will look like a horrible money-grabbing, oh, the rich lifestyle doesn't get impacted by the pandemic, but the common man does, right? Have you I don't been need, to Disney recently? I That's what need, they do. We don't need LeBron James to tell us to stay in our homes, all right, because he lives in a 10,000-square-foot mansion, and then poor pity him how he has to swim in his big swimming pool and hit the spa. That's not what Disney wants us to reflect, is this idea that, oh, you know, you regular people, you guys have to do the social distancing thing and you can't get fireworks. But for the wealthy people, we still get our fireworks because we're important. We're more important than you. I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's the way they've wrong. been going for the last four or five years, right? It's basically, yeah, there's the Disney for the plebs, and okay. then there's the Disney for the people who can um, afford it. All right. That's, that's the way it's been. All right. What's the next one? <laughs> that's it. That's not it. No, no. we got way more to go with on this. All right. Wait a minute. We have to talk about... Past what's going to be the day they open? No, no. we got way more to talk about. Like what? The next thing is, what kind of discounts are going to uh, you think that Disney is going to offer in order to encourage the plebs you know, to come demands. and have no fireworks? <laughs> yes, essentially, until they start having fireworks and all that jazz. Oh, we didn't talk about this. We forgot shows. Do we think they're going to do shows? Oh, do we think there's going to be? Okay, well, what kind of shows? In let's pick. First... Let's pick a specific show. Um, indoor shows, not outdoor shows. Okay, let's pick a uh, let's pick shows. Festival of the Lion King because that's one of I the most um, popular indoor sure, shows. Indoor shows. Like if they were gonna do any indoor show, day, I think it would be that. On day one, are they gonna have Festival of the Lion King? Yes. Show. You gotta put it. Okay. What do you put? Here we go. Uh, all right. I said, yes, every other seat. Though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Every other seat. So I actually, if you think about it, there's a lot of people saying, oh, well, they're not going to do any indoor shows. How could you possibly do that with social distancing? But I think it's actually probably one of the easiest things to mm -hmm. do with social distancing because you can control the capacity very easily by simply counting how many people are coming in. And you just have, you know, people sit every other seat, right, or whatever, and sit in party groups or however you want to do it. And if you think about it, pretty much all the indoor shows are like that, right? Like if you think, oh, there's a Finding Nemo show, there's the Voyage of Little Mermaid, mm -hmm. or sorry, not um, Voyage of yeah. Little Mermaid. Yeah, it is, Mermaid. yes. Yeah. I always confuse the ride and the show. Um, and then, you know, but all of those are basically auditorium theater seating, right? Even yeah. um, the American Adventure, right? You can easily just fill it half full. Half the time it's filled half full anyway, so. Yep. Just nope. control how people sit. I don't, I don't think there'll be a problem at all. They'll just that. put little do not sit here banners or something on the seats that they don't want to. Yep. And there aren't any shows where they interact, right? With people. The only yeah. one I can think of is Indiana Jones, but I mean, they could just use a cast member instead of an actual person. Yeah, that's what they'll do. That's what they'll do. All right. So we agree on that one. All mm -hmm. right. So. Discounts and offers. What are they going to do to encourage demand in this panic period? I don't that think they're going to do anything to encourage well, demand. Okay. I think they have pent up demand and their whole problem so, is controlling know, how much people are going to show know, up so that they don't run into a mass rush. Okay, we know of three types of discounts that have already... that, are, that, that Actually, yeah, three types of discounts that have already shown. Actually, four, technically. Well, two of them are maybe not related to this. One is there are deeper discounts for the rates for the bookings that have taken place 
since they've allowed for new bookings after the closure, meaning like the ones that were in May and June, even though they made the ones in May got canceled, and, and the ones in June that we booked, there were deeper discounts for certain rooms that you wouldn't normally be able to get for that rate. For example, uh, we, we booked. Well, we uh, priced out Yacht Club at like yeah. two fifty a night, which, yeah, is, which is less much than it cheaper normal than is. it typically is, right? Yeah. So they already. I mean, did, granted, it's June, so they already did some discounting there. It's not like such low discounting that is some historic discount or anything like that. So that might just be testing the waters, right? For for one, the other discounts we know is the discount you get if you get canceled. We don't know what that looks like yet because no one's been able to rebook that officially because there hasn't been an official date for rebooking that yet. Um, and the th and the third thing is the free dining offer, right? So we know that there's at least those things out there. But I feel like that's more about just getting people who had their plans disrupted to come back again at some point. It's not about bringing people back right away. So let's t take this one discount at a time. Because the free dining just has Will to be used be... by the end of the year. Will these okay? Let's let's take one discount and let's go with the lowest discount and towards the highest discount. So let's go lowest discount would be room rate discounts, right? Do you think room rates will be uh, at the lowest rates that they have been in the last twelve months, and in, in the foreseeable future? Right. It depends on what time frame you're talking about. I mean, what does it matter? What time frame? I said or the right the after lowest. they open, a month after they open, four months after they open, the whole time. They're not going to raise the rates, that's for certain. It, they'll do whatever makes sense with regards to the number of people who are booking All right, their so, fucking hotel. Well, let's say one month after they open. Are the rates going to stay at the lowest rates they've seen in the last 12 months? That's what we've seen so far. So is that is that yes or no on that one? I see yes. It's definitely a yes. Nope. So you're going the literally no discounts at all route. Because that's the I think they're gonna have they their standard discounts. That that's what we saw right now. We yeah, we right we priced out some yeah. cheap rooms because right now not a lot of people are booking, but also because they just have a standard pass holder discount that they offer every yeah, summer, and they just didn't get, get rid that. of it. They, yeah, but they made it. They it says thirty five percent every year, but it's thirty five percent off of some base rate. That base rate they move. However they want, whenever they want. Okay. So yeah, the thirty five percent's been the thirty five percent the last ten years. But the base rate's been climbing. So this base rate off of the thirty five percent is lower than it has been than we've yeah. ever seen it for certain rooms. Nah. Absolutely. How many how many times for Food and Wine Fest have we considered we would... Swan and Dolphin versus well, some of the other Crescent Lake resorts? Okay. They're You're wrong comparable. On, you're wrong on this. They've they always been comparable. Okay. Uh, all right. The, uh, look, you wouldn't be able to touch Revere for the price that we got it for if it wasn't for the fact that we're in this pandemic. That's just the truth. I, I think that if there are discounts, they're going to be, even if they are related to the pandemic, they're going to be dressed up as whatever the standard discounts that they always put out because I don't think Disney wants to be seen actively attempting to bring in crowds it's not All good right. pr right I, now I, I, I disagree it's the one that doesn't affect the brand the most because it's not related to the tickets itself it's related to the resorts which they fluctuate anyways in price but you don't think they're going to open the resorts until like a month after they i get that now, so. i get that okay so going on to the next type of discount. Wait, this the, is just silly. We're going to just have the same thing over no. and over. Cause will there be discounts fundamentally on... Fundamentally disagree on whether they'll offer discounts at all. Uh, okay. Will there be a price reduction in annual passes of any sort? Whether mm. it's additional credits, additional months, whatever it is. Some sort of a discount over annual passes in the last year versus this year. All right. Yep. All right. So I say they're going to have a longer renewal window. So, you know, they usually give you like that one month free extension mm -hmm. if you book, if you renew it before it expires. Oh, and I think they're going to. It's the same thing. I I'm think saying. they're going to do it a little longer for, than that. Three months? Right? The, length of the, the length of the enclosure. But they've already announced that. No, no. But I mean for new annual passes. 
you renew right now and you'll get I bet I believe you once they reopen announce the reopening date the new annual passes for renewal will allow you to have additional free months based on the length of the enclosure so if it's two months yeah, three months that. they already renewal, sent that out to not for existing I'm talking for new ones not for existing one new ones new ones are renews because those are two different things uh, I mean in this case it would be probably renewals. Yeah. Yeah, that I agree new on. Ones. New ones, I think you get the same deal as you've always gotten. You get 12 months for whatever the cost is. I don't think it's going to be... If you didn't have a pass during the time that it was closed, I'm, you're I'm not going to get anything. I'm with you. I'm with you. For renewals, that they will get this. So it'll be... I, I believe they're going to give three free months. And there's a potential they might even apply the credit if you ask for the refund for your previous annual pass to be applied to the new annual pass that you're extending. It might be that as well, but at least the three free months on top of... Uh, yeah, they're the going to want to keep your money locked up if they possibly mm -hmm. can. Yes. They do not want to lose pass holders for sure. So I think that they're going to be... Uh, I think that it's going to be, you know, basically what you would hope it would be for that. All right. I think we've talked about all the things that can be talked about now. So, what the, the, the last thing? There's one last thing. Oh my gosh. No, you just want to talk topic. about every freaking thing no, there is. No, last topic right. is, what do you want the restrictions to be? What would be okay? No. No? I think that's different for everybody. I don't think there's any point in speculating on that. Okay. Everyone's going to make their own decisions based on their family and their location and their travel and their current health status and all of that. There's... I mean, that's just different for every individual. It's just personal based on you, a bunch of different factors. What about uh, what about ticket discounts? Single, multi-day ticket discounts? Florida resident ticket discounts? I think the amount of time that you're going to have to wait to get on, on a single-day ticket is... Oh. Honestly, I'd, I, I'd be surprised if you can get in on a single-day ticket for the remainder of the year. I think they'll give multi-day ticket discounts where you'll get four days for 100 bucks as a Florida resident. Which is unheard of. It's either going to be three or four. Right now, it's like three. They was haven't done that discount in a long time. Three was one hundred twenty-five, and four yeah. was like one hundred fifty. I think they'll do something less uh, cheaper than that for Florida residents because that's yeah. who they want to encourage to come. Yeah, but I mean, if but then they're going to have to say resort guests, pass holders, and Florida resident tickets. That's one thing that they've never done with regards to like capacity closures mm -hmm. or whatever. They've never had any specific entrance requirement linked to a Florida pass holder ticket or not, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Aside from, I think they have like one night a year that's like a Florida resident mm -hmm. party. But as far as I know, they've never done that. So that would be very interesting to see if they do. Would be. Well, we hope uh, this little debate is a little informative and uh, also entertaining to watch. Let, it, let us know if you agree with us on our dates. Um, let us know which you think is going to open first, resorts or parks. We seem to be in a disagreement on that. Parks. Resorts. All right. <laughs> As always, we uh, like to end each episode with a quote from Walt Disney himself. And one thing he always liked to say is, make your dreams come true. And I would like to make my dream of going back to Walt Disney World come true on June 8th. That would be nice. That would be nice. Hey, you can go to Disney Springs on May 20th. Oh, there you go. All right. As always, I'm Brian. I'm Janet. And we are Distinctive. Distinctive. Bye. Bye.